helicopters. Aren't they awesome? The purpose of this video is just to go over some of the most popular helicopters out there, look at the evolution and history of helicopters, and just talk all about helicopters because they're so awesome. A helicopter is defined as an aircraft that derives its lift from blades that rotate about an approximately vertical central axis. What is the evolution of this awesome flying technology? Why are helicopters so widely used today? Why was the Vietnam War called the Helicopter War? If we're going to talk about helicopters, we've got to talk about Leonardo da Vinci. In 15th century, in Italy, he produced a sketch of what he called the helical air screw that could be powered up by a wound-up spring. This device was never built, but it's one of the earliest drawings of a helicopter machine. And even though da Vinci is generally credited with inventing the helicopter, the first practical design wasn't developed until the 1930s. Like a lot of new technologies in history, military plays a role, and helicopters are no exception. Before World War II in Germany, there was a synchrocopter, and this made it into serial production. But because of all the Allied airstrikes on production facilities, there was no large-scale production of any kind of helicopter in Germany during World War II. And so, as history unfolded, it was the model of Igor Sikorsky, who came to the United States from Russia, that became the first mass-produced helicopter in the world. And it was what's called the R-4, which had a simple single rotator design and was produced 131 times. And this helicopter pretty much jump-started the whole helicopter market, and it proves the utility of helicopters for rescue and reconnaissance through service in World War II. And the nation behind this helicopter was Great Britain. It was the first nation to use helicopters during wartime, when the R-4 rescued a pilot and three injured passengers from a plane crash in the mountains of northern Burma in April of 1944. Around this time was the Bell Model 30, which was the first helicopter built by the Bell Aircraft Company in 1943. And it was designed by a man named Arthur M. Young, and the type served as a demonstration test bed for the future successful Model 47. And this Bell 47 became the first helicopter certified for civilian use on March 8, 1946. And over in the Soviet Union in 1948, the Mil Mi-1, which was a three or four seat light utility helicopter, was first flown. And it was the first Soviet helicopter to enter serial production. And next we're going to look at the 1950s. When the Korean War happened, it basically proved even more so than World War II the general effectiveness of, of using helicopters in a combat theater. The Bell 47 that I mentioned before was purchased by the U.S. Army and designated the OH-13, and it was used for observation, artillery aiming, and medical evacuation. And this is when the helicopter technology really started to advance when the turbine engine is first used in a helicopter design by Charles Kamen in Connecticut. The power to weight ratio of a turbine was four times that of a piston engine and it revolutionized the helicopter design and performance at the time. And in 1954, the Sikorsky H-34 is introduced that had a variety of uses from utility transport, anti-submarine warfare, search and rescue, and VIP transport. In 1962, the Sikorsky CH-54 was a twin-engine, heavy-lifting helicopter that was designed by Sikorsky Aircraft for the United States Army, and it was named after an 18th century chief of the Wyandotte Indian tribe. And of course, in the mid-1960s, when the Vietnam War took place, helicopters were used in a whole bunch of different missions, from troop transport to gunships, search and rescue, medical evacuation, resupply, to command and control. So if there was any doubt at this point that helicopters are a useful tool in war, Vietnam put it to rest. This is where we see the classic Huey helicopter, which is officially known as the Bell UH-1 Iroquois. And this was a military helicopter that was powered by a single turboshaft engine with main and tail rotors that were two-bladed. It was ordered into production in March of 1960, and it was the first turbine-powered helicopter to enter production for the U.S. military. And since then, over 16,000 have been built. And it was actually originally designated as the HU-1, not UH-1, and this led to the nickname of Huey. Another helicopter in the Vietnam War was the Bell AH-1 Cobra. This was a two-blade, single-engine attack helicopter, and it was developed using the engine, transmission, and rotor system of the Huey. So the Cobra is also referred to as the Huey Cobra, or Snake. Another major helicopter during the Vietnam War was the Boeing CH-47 Chinook, and this is a twin-engine heavy-lift helicopter. It's one of the heaviest lifting western helicopters, and its name is from the Native American Chinook people. Its primary roles were troop movement, artillery placement, and battlefield resupply. It has a top speed of about 200 miles an hour, and the helicopter was faster than the contemporary 1960s utility helicopters and attack helicopters, and is still one of the fastest helicopters in the U.S. inventory. 
When you look up into the skies these days, you might notice, if you live in an urban area, the Bell 206. This helicopter was actually introduced around this time, and it's a popular helicopter that sees use in law enforcement agencies and news reporting. So what were the Soviets doing during this time? They were busy with the new Hind helicopter gunship, which is officially known as the Mil Mi-24. It's an attack helicopter and a low-capacity troop transport with room for eight passengers. It was produced by Mil Moscow Helicopter Plant and has been operated since 1972 by the Soviet Air Force and its successors, along with more than 30 other nations. This is the one that Rambo took out at the end of Rambo Part 2. Once you hit the 1970s, America is seeing the development of new helicopters based on lessons learned from the Vietnam War. You have the Boeing AH-64 Apache. This was originally created to replace the AH-1 Cobra. It's a four-blade attack helicopter featuring a nose-mounted sensor suite for target acquisition and night vision systems. It's armed with a 30mm chain gun carried between the main landing gear. And the U.S. Army is the primary operator of this helicopter. And it's also became the primary helicopter of many other nations. Also in the 70s saw the introduction of the Sikorsky UH-60 Blackhawk, which is my personal favorite helicopter. It's a four-bladed, medium-lift utility helicopter that was manufactured by Sikorsky Aircraft. The first Blackhawk entered service with the U.S. Army in 1979 to replace the Bell UH-1 Iroquois, or the Huey, as the Army's tactical transport helicopter. This is followed by the additional fielding of electronic warfare and special operations variants, and they have served in combat during conflicts in Grenada, Panama, Iraq, Somalia, the Balkans, Afghanistan, and other areas in the Middle East. The biggest helicopter in the world is Russia's heavy-duty Mil Mi-26 Halo, which first flew in 1977. Over 200 of these have been built, and this helicopter is able to lift like 22 tons and load 80 troops at a time. In the early 1980s, the United States Army 106th Special Operations Aviation Regiment, Airborne, which is also known as the Night Stalkers, identified the need of a small helicopter that could land in the most restrictive locations and could be easily transported on Air Force airlifters. Because of this, they chose the OH-6A Scout Helicopter, and it became known as the quote-unquote Little Bird because of its small comparison to other aircraft in the task force. The 1981 Sikorsky CH-53 Super Stallion is one of the world's largest heavy-lift helicopters today, and it's currently the largest and heaviest helicopter in the United States military. In 1989, Bell and Boeing partnered to build the V-22 Osprey, which is the world's first production tilt rotor that can take off like a helicopter and fly like an airplane. In the early 2000s, the Sikorsky S-92 became a standard for commercial helicopter transport. And the military version of the S-92, which is the H-92 Superhawk, can be configured for specific missions including search and rescue and executive transportation. In 2007, the Airbus UH-72 Lakota is the first Europe European-owned, U.S.-produced helicopter entering service for the U.S. Army. And what are the Chinese doing, you ask? Well, the CAIC Z-10 is an attack helicopter developed by the People's Republic of China and introduced in 2012. It's designed primarily for anti-tank warfare, but has a secondary air-to-air -air capability as well. Today, there's tens of thousands of helicopters operating worldwide, and they serve a whole bunch of different purposes, from disaster relief to medical evacuation, news gathering, police, construction, logging, firefighting, and more. I love helicopters, and I hope you have an awesome day.